Mayday. I've had four tuna lessons so far. Uh, if we could try protocol by just attempting a few observations. First of all, two of the most crucial ministries are here today represented at the highest level, showing all of you that this is really important to them and that you are really important to them. And that's amazing. Can we please give them a round of applause? For them? I do not skip the captains of industry. I really like that. And it is equally wonderful that they are here today because you know they are very busy as well. I um, Vice Chancellor of Hits, can I embarrass you while you're gone? Engineer. I saw him speak in July at Innovation Barraza, and I kid you not, I tried to copy the whole speech. I have never heard somebody speak more truisms, more appropriately, to his audience of almost 3,000 people. It is without a doubt clear that HIT is never hesitant in being a leader in all things technology and innovation, and uh, I just want to applaud him for his leadership. He doesn't hesitate when he tries to support and um, do post events like this, I'm sure he didn't hesitate. So thank you for your absence. And I do feel it all the time. Finally, one last observation. Um, Ritito Technomag has been with Sweat Equity really building something. And today with ZIE, they put together an incredible event. Yeah? This is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so who am I? Why am I here? Uh, I am Nicole Finneman, and as a public affairs officer at the U.S. Embassy, I have, and I've thought about this a lot, the best job in the world. Period. You heard in my introduction that I am responsible uh, for engaging Zimbabwe's youth, and specifically entrepreneurs. And there is not a morning since I arrived in this country that I don't wake up to at least seven to 700 WhatsApp messages that contain things that just blow my mind and inspire me about what you were doing. If we're on WhatsApp together. I would ask that you go to sleep sometimes and not WhatsApp me at 2 a.m. But I, I have never been more consistently inspired. This is my working and living on my fifth continent, my eighth country, and that is the truest statement I could ever say. I have the best job I've ever had, and I have the best job in the world. Obama, they turned heads. So the next year, Washington, the White House specifically, said, oh, you're definitely getting the same amount of fellows next year because that was amazing, and they were one of the most valuable components to the entire fellowship. So in 2015, 15 new fellows went to the U.S., half of whom were in the business and entrepreneurship track. The same thing happened. So, when the White House, because this is President Obama's true belief that Africans need to be coming together and talking to each other more, we happen to have all of these empty institutions for a few months during the time of the fellowship, and we have a lot of people that would love to share their experiences and expertise, so why don't we just provide the venue for that to happen? It was working so well, right? Over 30,000 Africans have applied. That's a low number, actually. And 1,000 have thus far participated that the White House wanted to expand it. But they weren't just going to double everybody's numbers. They weren't just going to expand everybody's numbers. They wanted to know how many genuinely amazing fellows could each country send to this program. In 2016, South Africa is going to send 60 Mandela Washington fellows on the program. 60 or up. In 2016, Kenya is going to send 60 fellows on the program. And in 2016, Zimbabwe is going to send 60 fellows to the Mandela Washington. <laughs> Zimbabweans consistently punch above their weight class, they consistently turn heads, and they consistently inspire. Just this last summer, we call it summer, winter, in Nairobi, in July, there was the Global Entrepreneurship Summit, the sixth annual. But this one was going to be smaller. The White House wanted 1,000 people. 
entrepreneurs and investors from all around the world, that's what, 190 countries? Zimbabwe had the most entrepreneurs invited to do that summit. Yeah, but they deserved it. Do you know what they did? They, I don't embarrass any of them, but they made connections. They're bringing corporations to visit the Zimbabwe. They're talking to airlines. They're doing amazing things with those three days in Nairobi. They organized better than any other group at the summit, and they are still today willing to share their experience. They are doing public events. If you turn into our Facebook page, you can hear about the next one. We simply are trying to provide them with a platform or a stage whenever they want it, because we believe they have something to share. So the problems are punching above their weight like you wouldn't believe, and if you're not seeing that, I'm sorry for you. Maybe it's not 30% of Zimbabwean startups that are making it. Maybe it's less. Only until November 11th. So you would need to think about this in a hurry. Please don't miss this opportunity to tell us about the amazing things that you do and that you intend to do. And join the fastest growing, most robust network on the continent. I'm going to leave you with one last thing because it's pretty exciting. Because of all of those Zimbabwean entrepreneurs if they've gone as a tech woman to Silicon Valley or business and entrepreneurship program or community solutions, if they've gone as a Mandela Washington fellow, or even if they've gone as a delegate to the Global Entrepreneurship Summit in Nairobi, because they have turned so many heads just this week, just yesterday, Zimbabwe received an invitation to join the Global Innovation Through Science and Technology Network. almost 5,000 startups around the world in specific membership countries earn over $80 million in startup capital and capital overall. It provides amazing resources, and we were going to be so happy to partner with every university that's here with HIT, with TechMA, to make sure you know about those online free resources, and if you need internet, you're welcome to come to us. We are going to make sure that you know about the competition you send in a video of what you're doing, and it's a global competition, and then you're all expenses paid to compete on the global stage for investment. This is really amazing, and it has nothing to do with the U.S. Embassy. It has everything to do with the heads that Zimbabwean entrepreneurs are turning. So congratulations. Thank you for inviting me here today to tell you a little bit about what, what it is that we are doing here. But please keep in mind that we're doing it for the reasons I mentioned. If we can support the great things that are already happening, we can help just bring great people together. We are trying to do that for the reasons I mentioned. Thank you so much for your time. Some of you who hope I did, who hope I did, you know? That's why I did my family, and I grew up in that area, in that area, and I even the oldest form of communication which we had, the partnering system, it was not operating in that area. There was nothing uh, of any sort of uh, that kind of communication. So for me, uh, finding out about uh, fiber optic cables um, is really what inspired me to go into the telecommunications area and I looked for the university. And that's where I, I, I uh, um, when in studying telecommunications. So that's, that's me. Uh, I hope we will pick up one or two things. Um, right now, we are in the mobile communications area, and uh, we are not yet getting Zimbabweans to come up with the applications that will address their own situation and improve the general life. Um, I think I just want to share this, um, this little thing, uh, but no offense to Professor who are here present. Uh, must apologize right from the onset. Um, right. A professor in Wasu missed their bus and was stranded in Chimaniman and decided to pick up for the night as there were no buses till the next day. Luckily, Wasu had a tent as he was more accustomed 
to the bus timetable in the remote area. After the good day attend all set up, both men fell sound asleep. Some hours later, was with the professor and said, Show an honorable professor. Ring my finger and tell me what you see. And the professor replied, I see millions of stars. And then he also says, What does that tell you? The professor ponders for a minute, then says, Astronomically speaking, he tells me there are millions, millions of galaxies. Time wise, it appears to be approximately a quarter past three in the morning. Theologically, the God is all powerful. It were small and insignificant. Meteorologically, it seems we will have a beautiful day tomorrow. And uh, what about you also? And they were so shaking his head and says, Tell the viewer. <laughs> <laughs> tell me from the story. That's what you do. So, what I'm trying to say is, let's put things in our according to Zimbabwe, which is the dead father who was a missionary. And uh, he started teaching in the southern part of Zimbabwe, got attracted to some young men there, and they got married, and out I came. <laughs> and so I'm 100% Zimbabwe, and I'm very proud of it, and I thank God for it. Mine is basically not to talk, to talk about the entire economic story because otherwise we'll be here the entire day. But basically, just to give a snippet of my own experience in economics. And possibly the best point to start my story is uh, way back in 1996, on the 7th of February. I can never shake that date away from my mind because that's the day uh, our second child was born, Daniel. He was born in the Avenue's clinic. And that's the first day I also met Mr. Masiwa as the founder of Econet. And on the 12th or the 12th of October, on the 7th of February, after the birth of my son, the doctors dismissed me from the room and said, look, I could go anywhere I wanted. So I proceeded to go to the interview because that happened to be the same day I had an interview with Mr. Masiwa in uh, Delhi Life Tower at the Kopi area. So I went there and I must say that I was not looking for a job. I had been informed by the employment agents that I needed to talk to him. So I went there without so like uh, what you would call an agency to find a job. And it was, it was basically just to communicate and find what they wanted. That conversation transformed my life. And the question is, what is it that I found there? Because I was fairly comfortable where I was coming from, or where I was at that particular stage. But it was the interaction with Mr. Masiwa that uh, was unique, in the sense that I saw something that I had never seen before in a man, and that is vision. The vision was so clear as he was articulating what he wanted to do, that it set my mind thinking that yes, I had come to this place without looking for a job. I had come from an employment agency where it indicated that this team needed to talk to me. But something hit me during that conversation. It was vision. Ladies and gentlemen, what are the fundamental things that I've learned in my life through the experience that I've had in Nicolet? If I may put it that the most important point that I learned was that as human beings, we cannot go successfully through life without clarity of vision. So there was a man, engineers, to the technical people, to say the technical platforms are in place. And I believe that what we need to do is to put on our thinking capacity and make those solutions a reality. Let me say diligence is something that I believe is one of the three fundamental pillars of success wherever you go. Again, for the chapter 10, verse 4, talks about lazy hands lead to poverty. Mm -hmm. But diligent hands always lead to wealth. 
I, I used to think that, no, it must be my relationship with somebody. No. Diligent lead lead to wealth. And let me conclude by a scripture which I love very much, Deuteronomy chapter 8, 18, which says, But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the capacity, some version says, the power to create wealth. And I believe that Zimbabwe is on its way to creating incredible wealth. And the men and women I see in this place, each one of us has been given that capacity. It's a God-given capacity. All we need is to turn it on. And I believe that nothing is impossible. Thank you very much.